I know everybody is a little nervous about the IV, sometimes even more so than the surgery, which amazes me. But today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about an IV. How does it work and why do we need it? The important aspect of having an IV is not only for me to be able to adequately hydrate you throughout the whole procedure and give you fluids continuously. I have to have access in order to give you anesthesia medications. I have to be able to redose medications throughout the case and also deliver medications if I have any complications that would be able to save your life. So I want to show you here the two types of IVs that I usually use. Basically there is a needle, a hub, and a small nylon catheter which is called an angiocath. This whole system is called an angiocath and it's going to sit inside your vein and they have different diameters. This is a 20 gauge and it's a little bit larger than this one. So it's slightly thinner than the 20 gauge. So you can ask me, oh, well, Frankie, why don't you just always put the smaller gauge in the patient? That, because obviously the needle is going to be smaller and it's going to hurt less. Well, the reason why is the larger IV that I can get in you is the more fluids I'll be able to deliver because that larger diameter of that IV bore is going to be able to get more fluids through it in a shorter amount of time. So if I can get a 20 gauge catheter in, I'm always going to go for the 20 gauge catheter. Now, if you have very thin veins, then I would, I would probably go with this 22 gauge catheter, which is the blue catheter here in my hand. And the only reason I would do that is because your veins are very thin and I don't want to blow your vein and have to try to start that IV multiple times. Okay, so another aspect that I would like for you to call your attention to here on this IV is that the, the IV catheter itself that stays inside your vein only has this nylon tip. The actual needle that was used to pierce your skin and introduce the catheter is removed and tossed out. So this doesn't, doesn't stay in your body. So a lot of times after I start the IV on the patient, the patient is afraid of moving their hand because the IV, obviously this part is going to be inside your vein. This will not hurt your vein. This will not damage your vessels. So there's no problem moving your hand or flexing or depending if it was placed on the AC fossa, which is up here. It's not, you can bend your arm normally because this also bends. And speaking of positioning, I usually start IVs on the hand because a lot of our procedures, the patients are actually turned face down on their belly. And when they're positioned that way, their arms are positioned like so. And if I place the catheter here in the, what we call the AC fossa, what will happen is there will be no flow from the IV because you'll be bending the actual catheter. So that's the reason most IVs I put I place on the hand itself. A lot of people when they come in they'll tell me Frankie uh, I want a butterfly needle and this is what a butterfly needle is. A butterfly needle is used to draw blood before surgery. They call it butterfly because of these little two tabs in order to insert and that is usually connected to a vacutainer where I'll be able to draw blood. Well the difference between a butterfly needle and an actual angiocath is that the actual needle stays inside the patient. So we don't want that. We don't want an actual metal hub needle inserted in the patient the whole time during the procedure because obviously with movement that metal hub can actually end up tearing the walls of the vein and will cause a hematoma. So actually the diameter of a butterfly needle is about the same as a 22 gauge catheter. So there's no difference in the size itself, but this is not used during a case. This is just used, a butterfly needle is only used to draw blood. So now I want to quickly demonstrate to you how does an IV work when it goes into your body. I have this IV tubing here and we're going to pretend that it is a patient's vein inside their hand and this is their hand. So the way I approach this is obviously I'm going to have gloves in my hand. I'd first clean the skin with alcohol where I intend to pierce the skin to start that IV. After I place a tourniquet on the patient's arm 
It'll help that vein engorge. Sometimes I'll even tap the vein and that will actually make the vein get a little bit plumper in order to facilitate me securing that IV. I pull the skin taut on the patient and I, uh, I go in in a 45 degree angle. After I finally pierce the skin and inside the vein, what will happen is, you don't see it now, but I will get a flash of blood here on my hub, meaning that I'm inside the vein. I will usually go down on my angle and I will proceed to insert that catheter by pushing it in over the needle and the needles removed and I apply pressure so blood won't be gushing out. At that point, I am going to connect my IV tubing to that hub and then I'm able to remove pressure and secure that IV tubing to the hub itself, to the angel cap. Now I'm gonna have access directly through this IV tubing into your vein and I'm going to be able to deliver medications and also IV fluids continuously throughout the whole procedure. And if there's any other medications that we need to give, we always deliver it through this little small hub here that gives me access to the IV line. At the end of the procedure, after when you're ready to get discharged, the nurse in the PACU will get a gauze, she'll place it over the puncture site and she'll remove the IV and the hub and she'll seal it off with tape. So that's basically it. The IV is essential for every aspect of the procedure. Before, in order to start loading you up with fluids, during the procedure itself to continuously giving you fluids and also deliver anesthesia medications, and also in recovery in case we need to give you more medications in recovery. So I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about IVs and I'll check you out next time on the next video.